In this video, we, we demonstrate the calculation of solar irradiation onto any surfaces. Details of these calculations can be found in this document, and I strongly suggest you use this document as a guide when you watch the videos of calculation. In this demonstration, we show calculations of solar irradiation onto the surfaces of a building that's shown like in the, the figure shown here. The first surface, surface number one, is north facing. We can tell that from the surface azimuth angle, which is zero degrees. That's the angle measured from the north direction clockwise to the normal of the surface itself. You can also see surface one is a wall that's vertical from the surface tilt angle, which is 90 degrees. Here, the surface information also includes ground reflectance because we need to have that information to calculate the reflected the solar irradiation from the ground surrounding the surface. Also, we need the view angle between the, the surface and the ground, which is 0.5 in this case. Now, some of this information of the surface comes from another sheet. And some of the information uh, in the for the surface is from calculation. Now this is how the view angle between the wall and the ground is calculated, shown in this formula. You can see from this sheet this external heat gains, which provides information for the surfaces, and you can see some of the information of the surfaces. This is a surface number one and it has a tilt angle of 90 degrees. It's also the, the surface area is given here, which we'll use in a, some, in a different place. The solar sur uh, surface solar absorptivity, which is also needed. Uh, what we just used in the solar irradiance, surf, uh, solar irradi irradiation onto surfaces, this, this information is provided to this sheet. So is the azimuth angle and uh, the uh, the tilt angle. These two angle information. These two angles. Okay. But for now, when you're just uh, developing this sheet to calculate the solar irradiation onto surfaces, you can arbitrarily assign a value to the surface azimuth angle, and arbitrarily assign a surface tilt angle, ground reflectance, but the uh, this view angle needs to be calculated, which is a very simple calculation. Now let's go on, mo move on and uh, look at the, the calculations of uh, the solar irradiation onto, onto this surface number one. So the calculation is done for 24 hours of the day. Now first we calculate the local solar time. The local solar time is calculated by adding a difference between the solar, local solar time and the local civil time to the given local civil time. Well, this local civil time, the difference between local solar time and local civil time is calculated from the basic solar calculation that we demonstrated in a different video, which is on this sheet, solar angles. Just to review that, this is the sheet that we did previously, which is called the solar angles. Basically, it has information of the date and the location of uh, the place where for which we're doing the calculation, longitude and the latitude. And you can see this is the cell in which the difference between local solar time and local civil time is given, is calculated. That difference local solar time, local civil time difference has to do with the, uh, the longitudinal difference between your location and uh, the standard meridian for the time zone, and also the equation of time. You can refer to the, pr the other video for details. Now, once you know the local solar time, you can uh, directly get the hour angle of uh, this hour for this time. And this is basically a function of uh, the local solar time. It's a very straightforward thing. 
you can also uh, tell you can also see that uh, this hour angle is negative here which means this is a uh, before noon now we only separated the 24-hour day into before noon and afternoon so each class has 12 hours in it then we can calculate the solar altitude angle which is a function of uh, the latitude that's the what L stands for and it is a function of the hour angle which is D3 uh, D13 a cell uh, reference and also it's a function of the cell, uh, the sun's declination angle which is delta in the formula one thing I want you to look at is that uh, the solar altitude angle for this hour this zeroth hour is negative 46 degrees what this means is that uh, the sun is below the horizon so the solar altitude angle is negative and that means the sun is yet to rise from below the horizon this is a uh, this is at night then we continue to calculate the solar azimuth angle this is the uh, position of the sun measured from the north you draw a uh, arc from the north direction to the direction of the sun's projection onto the earth now the solar azimuth angle is illustrated in this figure 7-5 in the textbook and uh, this is the this is the angle this is the solar azimuth angle now we can also calculate the the angle of incidence that is the uh, the angle between the solar ray to the end of the normal of uh, the surface which is calculated this way in this formula that is function of uh, the uh, uh, the solar altitude angle it's a function of uh, uh, the other things uh, there, there are so many of them you can you can trace them uh, it's also a tilt angle function angle uh, function of the tilt angle uh, function of the azimuth angle of the surface which refer to the information we just described uh, up there that's not seen in this view right now okay another thing that's worth noting is that uh, there are so many hours in a 24-hour day uh, for which the hour angle uh, I'm sorry for the, the the solar altitude angle is negative okay for these conditions from the zeroth hour to the fifth hour the solar altitude angle is negative which means the Sun is below the horizon there's no solar irradiation yet so for these hours we calculate uh, the the, the solar azimuth angle and the solar incidence angle these two uh, angles are not really meaningful because uh, there's no solar radiation yet and as a result we force these things to be zero so the direct normal solar radiation must be zero and all the diffuse uh, radiation the all the other terms related to that are, that's dependent on so uh, direct normal solar radiation those all those terms are zero so it's only after the sun has risen that the calculation of uh, the solar uh, direct normal so solar radiation and the other solar radiation terms become meaningful which is uh, below this line okay let's see the formulas below this line now uh, this is the familiar equation that you see in the uh, the the document okay this is the document that I, uh, this is the equation in the document that I was referring to this is the for calculating the normal direct radiation for any location on the earth please also know that uh, I have a condition uh, in this formula uh, that is if this if the solar altitude angle is uh, is positive it's only when the solar altitude angle is positive then this my my calculation in the formula is meaningful otherwise if the solar altitude, altitude angle is negative I force the result to be zero 
This cell is for the calculation of the diffuse irradiation onto the horizontal surface. Now this cell calculates the direct irradiation onto the surface. Now this is different than the normal direct radiation. The direct radiation onto the surface is equal to the normal direct radiation multiplied by the cosine of the angle of incidence of the solar ray. And also you can see there's a uh, special treatment. Uh, you take the maximum between zero and that product. That's because in some cases uh, you may get a negative value for the cosine in these cases. Uh, okay, that's not wrong cells. So in these cases, in the angle of uh, incidence, in the case of angle of incidence greater than 90 degrees, it is possible for this to happen. That's, this, is, this is the situation where the sun is on the other side of that surface. Now, th when, I when, I, when I say the surface, I'm referring to the, the surface that's exposed to the air uh, on the outside of the building. Now, if you imagine the surface, each surface can be represented by a plane then the sun can be on uh, either side of the plane. And there's a outside, there's also an inside. So the surface will only receive direct, no, direct uh, uh, solar irradiation when the outside is facing or is seeing the sun. Um, when you have a situation where the, s the angle of incidence is greater than 90 degrees, that means the sun is on the up, uh, on the wrong side is on the inside of that uh, surface so there's no direct uh, solar radiation onto that surface now it is important to point out uh, it is very important to know the date so the date is a uh, the most uh, is the first piece of information that you have to get so the year you can ignore because it, we basically only need to know the month and the day so this is uh, here we're using July 31st as the date for calculation. This is summer uh, in the uh, uh, northern hemisphere and then the, the location is in Doha, Qatar. So on this day of the year, uh, what happens to the north, fa uh, north facing wall is as follows. Now remember, keep, let's keep in mind the date here for this calculation is July the th 31st. And on that day, uh, for Doha, Qatar, a north-facing wall will see the sun directly in the early morning hours, in the morning hours after, after sunrise, which is uh, over here, okay? So these uh, hours, the three hours. And then you can see uh, in those hours, the direct solar irradiation is positive is non-zero on the north facing surface. However, the sun rises and then it goes uh, higher and higher, but also it goes towards south. In the middle of the day, uh, for several hours, the sun is on the other side of a north facing wall. It does not see the north facing walls outside directly in the middle of the day. So in the middle of the day, um, on July 31st, the sun does not see a uh, north facing wall directly in Doha. And afterwards, in the, in the afternoon, there are still a few, uh, a few hours that the, where the sun will see the north facing wall directly. Uh, for those hours, the, uh, the solar irradiation, direct solar irradiation uh, is again positive. Now in this cell, we have uh, a formula that's to calculate the is, is calculating a basically a, a view factor and uh, it is the ratio of the diffuse solar irradiation onto a, a vertical surface to the solar diffuse solar radiation onto a horizontal surface so basically we're calculating that ratio using uh, with this cell it's a long formula okay this cell is also needed for the final results. This is in this cell we calculated the total irradiation onto the horizontal surface. We needed we need this to calculate the reflected uh, solar irradiation onto a vertical surface. 
Okay, over here we calculated the diffuse solar irradiation onto this vertical surface, surface number one. Uh, it's quite straightforward. And here, this is the, uh, the reflected uh, solar irradiation from the ground to the vertical surface, surface number one. Then we can calculate the total solar irradiation onto the surface. Uh, the formula in that cell, the first uh, cell is a J, J19, because the color of that font is blue, so you don't, it's as if it's an invisible cell in the formula. But you can also see that uh, uh, from elsewhere uh, in this view. So we do that for every hour of the 24-hour day. We'll have 24 results. Because the solar, the cooling load calculation is a hourly calculation, and this is only for one surface. We do that for all the other surfaces. Okay, so I have surface number two. Surface number two is the east facing surface. It's this surface. This is east facing with a surface azimuth angle of 90 degrees. And we have surface number three, which is a south-facing vertical surface. It's a south-facing wall with windows. So this is the uh, this is surface number three. Now we also have surface number four, which is a uh, uh, west-facing, and uh, the, the azimuth angle is two hundred seventy degrees. And you don't see that the, the, this is the, the another surface that's behind uh, the view in, in this schematic. Now finally, you have a, a surface number five, which is the roof. For the surface number five, the, earth, uh, the, the surface azimuth angle is not uh, meaningful anymore because the surface tilt is zero. And then the surface azimuth angle becomes undefined. We gave it a value of zero just for convenience. Also know that for this surface, number five, which is facing upwards uh, towards the sky, the view factor between this surface and the ground becomes zero. So this surface will not ref receive any reflected uh, solar irradiation from the ground. Now when you have finished all the calculations, you can plot the results on it onto one a single plot for all five surfaces. And you can plot the solar irradiation uh, as a function of uh, local solar time. So of course, you can also plot uh, the, uh, the, the, the results as a function of local civil time. There will be a little shift of, of uh, depending on the day, depending on the day of the year, the shift may be different. The shift will be different. And then the curves have different shapes, and then they peak at different uh, times of the day. And you can tell the east-facing surface has a early uh, has a morning peak, um, and the roof has a uh, uh, has a noon peak. The west-facing uh, surface has a afternoon peak. The south-facing surface has a also a noon peak. The north-facing surface, the north-facing wall, has two peaks: one in the morning and one in the afternoon. We have explained that uh, earlier. So I hope you have a. Uh, uh, um, seen all the information uh, necessary in this video and uh, you can make your own spreadsheet that does the same thing.